Um, I thought I would take you through kind of the elements of training and do like short little videos about what we do. Um, obviously I've been training endurance horses for a very long time but I'm not a professional trainer. I have no qualifications in that area. This is not how I think it should be done. It's just what I can do with my resources and my time and what kind of experience I have. So make sure if you need to have like professional endurance horse training advice that you go and seek it and you make sure that you've got the correct equipment and you keep it safe and everything but I'm just going to show kind of what I do so let's just get the, the sewer down okay so what we have is a roller so a, a lunging roller um, with lots of different attachments and most importantly the one on the girth. Um, this roller was from Slanaba the Horse Mart that happened every last Thursday of the month in Wales when I was probably about six or seven because I really wanted dad to buy me a Falabella. He didn't, rightly so. Um, and he was getting us to break in his section D. So this is leather and canvas and it used to be bright blue and now it's kind of beige, greyish. Um, but still going strong. Then you need a numna. I like it to be you know, nice and padded and airy. Um, and then you need a Pessoa training aid. You don't have to get the official Pessoa ones. Um, loads of people do them now. So those are kind of the stuff that you put on the horse that's different. Then one of the great things about endurance tack is you don't need a lunging kind of cavasin or a special lunging bridle because our bridles come apart and they already have a loop for your lead rope. So, got my stuff, let's go get Qantas ready. Oh boy. He was that job. Roller on first and then head collar and bit next. So normally I'd keep the Pessoa attached to the roller and then it would be set up for that horse and I'd put it straight on. I thought I'd show you kind of how I put it on and how I fit it. Um, when I start out, so I just use or just attach the pump piece first and then I attach like the bit pieces here so they're just used to the back bit first, then vice versa. So I just use the bit 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 piece that goes through the bit and onto the roller, take the bum piece off. Once they're used to both of those, I put the whole thing on, super loose so it's not really doing anything, and then take them for a walk and literally just walk them in hand until they're happy and slowly bring it in. I never want the Pessoa to be too tight, so I want them to be, so if they're putting the head up in the air, being a typical Arab, Joe, you know, breathing the wind, that it's going to be a little bit tight as if I was like holding on to the reins. I want it to be nice and loose when they're going really rounded and, and moving from behind. So I never want to hoik them in and force them into a position. I just want to make it easier for them to make the right choices and be in the correct position. Okay, so butt piece first. I'm just going to clip it onto the middle and then take it over. So I want it. So it's kind of at the start of the dip into the hock, not too high up so it's still going to be pushing as he pushes back. If it was kind of up here it wouldn't be as effective, if it was down here it would get caught. So about there, there's plenty of give in it, it's not too tight, I can get my kind of hand sideways in it. That's kind of how I like it. This is one of the older types of Pessoa. They come with like nicer bits now. And I'd really like one that has a roller through the bit rather than running the webbing through the bit. So I've got a search on eBay for that soon. 
So I like to go through the side first. And then I run that through the bit. Now, if I was going to put and clip it to the side or up here, I would come from the inside and pull it to the outside. But today I'm gonna go between the front legs. So I want to run it from the outside and down to the inside. And then I clip it under here. Do the same with the other side. Now before you start, if you just make sure that all your buckles and stuff are equal, left and right. And then try to keep all the buckles away from any of the D-rings so they're not kind of catching. As they move, you want it to be as smooth as possible. And run it through the bit. So we're just going to check that all my buckles are level. Yeah, so we're level there. And then probably make sure it's easy at the back. Okay, so in terms of how tight the Pessoa is on, he can stand completely normally as he would do if he was naturally standing without it on. Um, but it is going to encourage him to bring his head down and he can get kind of his head side to side completely fine. So I like the freedom of movement. I don't want to force them to do anything. Qantas is at a stage now where he's doing trotting poles with the Pessoa. So usually <laughs> I would do walk first up to kind of 10 minutes max. Um, I'd lead them first and, and then move them out. Obviously, have a horse that is good to lunge to start with is probably best. Um, but Quantus has got to the stage where he's doing poles, but first of all, I'm going to walk him over them because every time we go to start lunging them, he gets surprised that they're there, even though they've been there for a few weeks now. So we'll walk over them first. I'm just going to set my timer and um, we're going to do 10 minutes each way today and we've worked up to this so we started doing eight minutes of walk two minutes of trot each way well we started at like 10 minutes of anything but when we got to training rather than education um two minutes of trot and eight minutes of walk and then we slowly increase the minutes of trot and reduce the minutes of walk i never do more than 30 minutes um, of lunging at a time and he will stay at 20 minutes max for the next couple of years um, and I only really lunge once a week I don't want them doing these kind of circles especially as youngsters um, you know I need my horses to go in straight lines and I don't want too much pressure on their joints and things um, so I want them to be nice and controlled he still motorbikes a little bit he's not bending as much which is why I don't want him to do too much of it until he learns to use himself a bit better. But we're going to set the timer and off we go. One of the best pieces of advice, pieces of advice I've ever given as a kid by an old trotting trainer was that your whip is only an extension of your hand and you should never do anything with a whip that you wouldn't be happy to do with your own hand. So it's just to help guide them. I never want to hit them or scare them. It's just there as my hands would be to be like, come on, let's go. This is the way I want you to go when they're so far away. Okay, you ready, cute boys? Good lad. And you can see how he's got room to put his head up, so it isn't really doing much, but it will encourage him to come down. He's a baby, he's still learning. If you watch Tizzy do this, her nose is literally chest level and she moves really nicely. But this is so much progress, because before, Quantus couldn't even achieve a circle. 
And I really like that he's not rushing, that he's taking his time. Still picking up his back leg. I train all my horses to stop and turn around to the alarm on the phone. Um, he's really, really good at the stop now and he almost gets the turn, almost. Tizzy, literally, you can just press repeat because she stops, turns around, starts trotting the other way. But you're getting there, well done. Good boy. I had an issue when I changed from a Sony phone to an iPhone because the alarm was different um, and I had to retrain Tizzy for a different sound. Right, other way, Pontus. So I really like using the Pessoa. One, because the horses can learn to move well without me interfering, without my imbalances and my inconsistencies. Um, two, because I can watch them move. It's really nice to see how they change through training as an assessment tool to see how the muscles are moving and also to look at any asymmetries. A lot of the time I'll, I'll film from the middle and film it in slow motion and kind of look back at it, see how the feet are landing. Um, so it's a really good tool to kind of get to know your horse. I feel I can feel stuff when I'm riding, but it's really good to see the muscles work as well. Also, it's a good thing for the winter for me. The hacking around here is all on the road, really, from the yard, unless I box out um, and the school is floodlit. So it's something training-wise that I can do without having to hack out or go anywhere. A little bit itchy. A little bit itchy. Yeah. Um, so for a youngster, I would never use it more than once a week, maximum 20 minutes. Um, so for like pleasure rides, novice, open level that's the amount i would use it i use it mainly at the start of training um while they're kind of doing the fitting work then i tend to use it less whilst i'm doing more speed work and stuff um but yeah that's how i use the pessoa it's how my horses benefit from it and it's one piece of the jigsaw of the endurance horse training puzzle <laughs> Thank you.